Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing kind of a TBR video but not in the sense of like a monthly TBR. Um, this is more of like a, I don't want to say a yearly TBR either, it's more of books that I'm excited about that I will read soon and I want to read soon but I can't guarantee when I read them kind of TBR. Uh, but I really wanted to do this because it is Women in Horror Month, um, and I actually read a lot of books by women. Uh, I think I read primarily books written by women. I would say about like 90% maybe, I think that sounds about right. I think about 90% of the books I read are by women. I actually just prefer <laughs> to read books by women. Um, I gravitate towards them more. I usually prefer them way more. And it is Women in Horror Month. March is Women in Horror Month. And I, I'm not saying I'm gonna read these books this month. There are a few that I really do want to read this month um, that I am prioritizing and I'll let you know when I get to them. But this is kind of just a, hey, maybe you're looking for a book for Women in Horror Month. I too am going to read books by women. Here are some books that I'm excited about. Maybe you are excited about them too. That is the weirdest way to put it, but that's the only way that makes sense in my head, so I said it out loud. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about <laughs> books that I'm excited about, books that interest me, um, and I don't know when I'll get to these. I can't promise that I'll get to them this month. I literally can't. I... <laughs> It is so hard to try to make a TBR for me. Just diversify your reading. I'm trying to diversify my reading. Something we should all be actively doing. It is something I'm actively doing and thinking about when I buy books and when I'm excited for books. So yeah, here are some recommendations, some books I'm excited for, some books you're probably excited for. If you've heard of them, <laughs> I'm assuming we, we've all heard of these. A few of them I've mentioned a lot. So yeah, I won't touch on all of these too too much because you know, I talk a lot about the same books. So let's just start. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. The first book up on my list that I am so excited for and I think I will be reading it this month. I really do think I will be reading it this month. I got an ARC on NetGalley. Um, I should have already read it. I'm behind on NetGalley. What's new? Um, but I really want to buy a physical copy. Like, I might, I might just do it anyways because I was, I'm really anticipating this book. It's one of my most anticipated releases of this year, and I, I really just want a physical copy because it's beautiful. So I might just go ahead and buy one, even though I have an ARC. I know that's crazy, but <laughs> that's just who I am, okay? And that is Sundial by Katrina Ward. We all know that I was obsessed with The Last House on Needless Street, by Katrina Ward. That book was fantastic. It was one of my favorite reads of 2021 and I am very 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 much looking forward to this book. One, the cover. Beautiful. Just like The Last House on Needless Street. Gorgeous, stunning, art, magnificent. All the beautiful words to describe it. That's how I feel. I want to look at it. I want to stare at it. I want to frame it. I want to touch it and that's why I want a physical copy so bad. So this is a psychological horror novel and I don't know too much about it and I've seen a lot of people saying to go in kind of blind like with The Last House on Needless Street so I don't want to know too too much but from what I can tell it's about a woman named Rob and um she has a husband, two kids, a nice house, yada 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 um, but she has, like, some, like, fears about her oldest daughter, Kelly, who collects tiny bones and whispers to imaginary friends. And then it says, Rob sees a darkness in Kelly, one that reminds her too much of the family she left behind. And then she decides to take Kelly back to her childhood home. She has to make a choice when they get there. I, I don't know what it's about. I've heard it's, um, very engaging and twisty and, like, 
kind of like mind bending like the last house on needless street so i'm very 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 excited um but like i said i think i'm just gonna go ahead and buy a physical copy even though um i have an arc i know like i'm i might just read the arc but like i want a physical copy so bad like i can tell that i need it i can tell and i think this might be one of my birthday books so <laughs> I'm just saying I think I need a physical copy and no one can tell me otherwise. Here is another book that I am like 100% sure that I will be reading this month. I think so. I think I'm going to try really, really, really hard to get it read because I'm so excited for this book. I've talked about it a lot. I'm not going to go into too much details because we know that I'm excited for it. We know, we know, we know. And that is Cherish Farah by Bethany C. Morrow. I need to read this. It's taken me too long. I've had it for like a month now. What is taking me so long? Hello, Erin. Get to it. Get to it. Read it. What's wrong with you? So I really do think I'm going to read it this month. I think this is going to be one of my next reads. I'm currently in the middle of a book that I'm reading for a reading vlog that you will see later on this week. <laughs> and after that, I think I'm either going to pick this one up or Sundial. So I'm not really sure. But um, I really want to read this. I want to read it so bad. It's a social horror, which I find so incredibly fascinating. I think when they're done well, they are phenomenal. I've heard mixed reviews about this. I know some people didn't love it as much as they wanted to, but I've also heard that the ending to this is like, ooh, whoa. Like, whoa, you know? And when people tell me that endings are like that, I get very excited. So I think I will be picking this up soon. Maybe next, hopefully. I really do need to read this. I'm very excited for it. I just, I really think this could be a five-star read. I put it in my five-star predictions. I really do think I could, like, fall head over heels in love with it. Um, but if it's not a five-star, I really do think it'll be at least a four-star read for me. So, um, I really just want to read it. I really do. So I think I'm going to prioritize it this month. And next, next, the next author and book we're going to talk about is one of my favorite authors. I feel like no one's gonna be surprised when I mention this book because it, hello it's me you're on this channel you should know what to expect and that is The Ravenous Dead by Darcy Coates. I also will be prioritizing this book this month because it's Darcy. <laughs> of course I have to prioritize Darcy. She's my girl. So this is the second book in the Gravekeeper series and I really did enjoy The Whispering Dead. I gave it four stars. I thought it was a really solid beginning start to the series. So I'm really really excited to see where this is gonna head and where this is going and I'm really excited just to see the characters more and um, I feel like this is gonna be I honestly feel like this is gonna be better than the first book because it's the second book and I know that sounds weird but I feel like The Whispering Dead was so so much like information like they really had to set up the series in that book uh, you were getting to know the characters you were getting to know what kind of was going on even though we still don't kind of know what's going on it was setting up the scene setting up the series so I'm hoping that this one's gonna be a little bit more you know, like it's gonna be more like intense, gritty, you know, like I feel like we're gonna get down into like some actual things in this one. Um, I really want to find out more. I'm very excited. I, I think this could be a really good series. Will it beat Voices in the Snow, the Black Winter series? I don't know. I can't say that, but I guess we'll know more f when I finish The Ravenous Dead because... This could be a game changer for this series for me. So I'm hoping that I really, 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 really like this one. Um, so yeah, you know I had to read Darcy. You know I have to read Darcy. I have to prioritize Darcy. So I will be trying to read this one this month as well. The next book that I'm going to talk about is a book that I have had on my shelves waiting for me to read for months. I have been not putting off reading this. 
I just, one, I kind of forgot that it was there. I get so wrapped up in new releases and, you know, reading certain books for certain videos and sometimes I just kind of get books that get pushed to the side. So this is one of those books that I'm kind of mad that I haven't read yet, but um, I'm hoping now that I've like pushed it to the front of my mind and like I know it's there more, um, I will pick it up and read it sooner. And that is Benny Rose, The Cannibal King by Hayley Piper. Um, I don't see a lot of people talking about this one by Hayley Piper. And this one sounds so, so good to me. It's a, obviously it's a cannibal story. But uh, Benny Rose, The Cannibal King, he is like an urban legend of this town. And on Halloween night, these friends kind of pull like a prank. So, um, you know, the prank, I, I don't know what happens, but it sounds like a storm comes and then they're actually going to encounter Benny Rose, the Cannibal King. So, um, yes, cannibals, check. Uh, 80s vibes, I think, I'm pretty sure. Yes, 1987, check. Uh, Halloween night, check check um this is screaming my name this is part of the rewind or die series and i have read a few of these i think like four um that's what cirque berserk is part of and i love cirque berserk so i really really want to read this one i think it's going to be really good um and i have yet to read anything by Haley piper which is very annoying to me i know people love Haley piper but i haven't read anything by her yet and so i'm just <laughs> This is the one I own. This is the one I have. So I need to like work it up to my TBR. Like, come on, let's go, Aaron. Make it up, make it move up. Come on, let's go. So now that it's like in the forefront of my mind and I have made this video, I think I will be able to remember that I have this and not forget about it again. Another book that I have talked about, everyone's talking about, it's very popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm including it because I need to read it as well because I'm. I'm missing out and that is Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is a sci-fi horror. It's supposed to be The Shining meets the Titanic like in space or whatever. Um, I'm not a sci-fi fan. I'm not a sci-fi fan. <laughs> I don't like sci-fi that much. It's not my, it's not my genre, okay? It's not my genre, but Everyone is talking about this, and everyone says that it's really good. I believe there's also some romance in here, which I know some people didn't love, but we know I love a romance moment. So I'm hoping that maybe I won't focus too much on the sci-fi. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm trying to, like, help it in my brain make sense. Um... I'm just, I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be honest, I really wanna read it because everyone's talking about it and it's new. Um, and I, I don't know, I think it could be really good. This could be really amazing for me. It could change my life. Um, you know, that's all I have to say. We'll see. Hopefully it's not too sci-fi and it doesn't uh, drive me insane, so. I know a lot of you have said that you like Dead Silence. You have said that in the comments when I've mentioned this book, so that gives me hope. Next up is a book that I think I will try to read this month. I think I'm gonna try to read this because it sounds very interesting, and it's also something that's not necessarily up my alley, you know? Like, it's not something that I really think I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. And that's A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. So this is a like reimagining of Dracula told from Dracula's bride's perspective. And I believe this is also like sapphic. So that intrigues me. It's also very short, way shorter than Dracula is. Um, I've never read Dracula. I don't know if I want to read Dracula. I've heard that the writing is like really hard to read <laughs> and I'm someone who if it like takes a lot of like comprehension for me to read I'm gonna be kind of I'm not gonna be great at it <laughs> if it takes my brain too much to read I will shut down uh, because my brain doesn't like to work too hard obviously uh, I think we all know that when I talk it kind of makes sense 
So when the writing is complicated for my brain, um, <laughs> it like overheats. <laughs> so I'm hoping that this is going to be like a, a, like a Dracula for me. Like this is going to be like better for me, right? Something I can get into. I like the idea of it being sapphic. I like the idea that it's from Dracula's bride's perspective. Um, it sounds good. I'm not a big vampire fan. Uh, I don't read a lot of vampire books or watch a lot of vampire movies. They're not really my kind of thing. I do prefer vampires over like zombies and probably actually over like sci-fi. I would rather watch a vampire movie than like a sci-fi horror movie. Well, I actually don't know. I don't know. It just depends. But I don't read a lot of vampires. I do want to change it because I kind of feel like I would like them more than I think I will. So I'm hoping this will kind of like boost my vampire thing. Um, and also I think I'll enjoy it. It's very short. I think I'm going to try to read it this month. Don't hold me to that though. Speaking of another book that is short, uh, To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. So I mentioned this... When did I mention this? I just mentioned this in a video, I'm pretty fairly sure. Uh, I think it was like a haul or something. But this is a very, very short novella and it is about a woman who is obsessed with the idea of like tasting dead flesh. Um, gross. Disgusting. Love it. So I think this is going to be kind of like a dark, gritty, gross, disturbing kind of book. But it's short and that excites me. I think I could definitely get this read in like just like a few hours so I might try to bump this up this month because I think if like I start to slump or um you know like something like something happens I can't figure out what I want to read I just pick this up and like boom I'd read it in like two seconds so I'm hoping that this will be like a buffer book for me so if I start to get slumpy or you know something like that something like that. I think this could be a good one. Um, plus it just kind of sounds really gross and that intrigues me and I've heard good things about it. So yeah, I don't know. That's all I have to say about that. So next up is another book that I just recently got and also it was in one of my 2022 anticipated release videos. I think the first one. Um, this one sounds very interesting. It sounds like it's going to be, um, one of those, uh, what do they call those books where it's like, I mean, I guess weird, but like, uh, I don't remember the word. I'll think of it. But it sounds like it's going to be kind of like mind bending in like a weird way or something like that. I don't know. And that is Jawbone by Monica Ojeda. Um, one, the cover, look at it. That is so freaking cool. It is absolutely beautiful and so weird and like, you know, I think this might be like a, a magical realism kind of vibe maybe. I don't really know. I don't know. It says, like, if I don't read the whole plot and I just read this little, like, blurb at the top, it says, Fernanda and Annalise are so close they are practically sisters. A double image, inseparable. So how does Fernanda end up bound on the floor of a deserted cabin held hostage by one of her teachers and estranged from Annalise? I don't know what this is. I think this is going to be like a wild journey. I think it's going to be kind of crazy. I think it's going to be kind of weird. Um, maybe like speculative fiction? Maybe? I don't know. Um, I'm excited. It says interweaving pop culture references and horror concepts drawn from... Um, Herman Melville, H.P. Lovecraft, and anonymous creepy pastas. Jawbone is an ominous multi-vocal novel that explores the terror inherent in the pure potentiality of adolescence and the fine line between desire and fear. I think this is going to be a wild ride. Like, so wild. I mean, the, the cover explains the wildness, right? Like, this is just... 
I, I have no words. I really don't know what this is going to be. Uh, but it sounds so interesting, and I think I could really, really like this. I really want to try to read it this month. I really do. So I think I might try to bump this one up as well to, like, the top of my TBR. Okay, second to last on this list is The Twisted Ones by T. King Fisher. I have yet to read anything by T. King Fisher. I've heard really good things about this one. I think this is gonna be like a folk horror kind of thing. I think the main character is gonna have like something in the woods that's like terrorizing her. So uh, very interested about that. Uh, I saw someone compare her writing to Darcy Coates's writing and so I was kind of like ooh don't mind if I do. So I'll, I'll be interested in that, but I've heard a lot of good things about uh, T. Kingfisher, and I think this one sounds really, really good. I'm not the biggest fan of folk horror. Um, when it's done really well, I love it, but like most of the time I don't really get engaged by it. So I'm hoping that this, because it sounds like it's going to be folk horror, I think if this is done right and I really enjoy the writing style, um, this could be like a knockout for me. So I'm, I'm, I really want to read this soon. I can't promise that I'll do it this month though, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping I get to this soon. And the last book on my list is The Drowning Kind by Jennifer McMahon. This is one of my newer books I showed in a, a book haul. Uh, I kind of really like Jennifer McMahon now after reading The Winter People. I told you I really enjoyed The Winter People way more than I thought I was going to. Really didn't think I was going to like it. So I think I could really like this one. I've heard really good things. I think this is a ghost story. Um, but I'm not really sure. And I kind of just want to go in blind because I did that with The Winter People and it worked really out. It worked out really well for me <laughs> because I really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping that this one... If it doesn't like surpass the Winter People, um, it will still be just as good as the Winter People. So we shall see. I've heard good things though. A lot of people seem to really like this one. So I'm hoping that I like it too. I don't know when I'm gonna get to this book. I really don't. I really, really, really don't know when I'm gonna get to this book. Those are some, just some. I have so many more that I could talk about. I could make like 17,000 videos like this of just women in horror books that I am excited to read uh, because there are so many of them. Like I said, I primarily read women in horror or women thrillers, even two for the majority. I just read a lot of women authors. Um, I just, I don't know, that's what I gravitate towards. It's what I prefer. I prefer their writing styles most of the time. So um, yeah, I could make so many of these videos. <laughs> so literally so many. Uh, but these are just some of the ones that I think I'll get to fairly soon. Like I said, I don't know if it'll be this month or next month. Some of them I'm really, really going to try to read this month though because I really, really, really want to. These are just some of the ones that I'm the most excited for at this moment in time and that I have like in my possession for the most part. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, let me know if you're reading any of these books, if you've read any of these books, I know some of you have read some of these already because we've talked about them in the comments, but you can let me know again and we can talk about them. Let me know if you're excited for any of them or what book that is written by a woman that you are most excited to read now, next month, this year, whatever it may be. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you enjoy from me. That way I can keep providing you with that kind of content. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We can become friends, talk about books, movies, manga, horror, thrillers, spooky stuff, all that jazz. And with that being said, I hope you are having a wonderful day, night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.